Hey everybody, this is Grant, your friendly OpenShift team member over at Red Hat. And today I want to show you how to use the new OpenShift online developer preview running the latest and greatest version of our code. If you're not familiar with what we've been working on over the last year or so, we have integrated native Docker containers and orchestration with the Kubernetes system to the platform. So now you can interact with the platform using Docker and orchestrate everything with Kubernetes. So hopefully you have an account for the developer preview version of OpenShift. If you don't, go ahead and sign up and you can refer to the announcement blog post for a link on how to do that. I also paste it into the video description in just a bit. All right, so the first thing I wanna do is show you how to log in to the console and give you a brief tour walkthrough. Now I'm doing this um, not scripted, so I just wanted to take a few minutes today and show you guys how to use it once you get your account because it is a dramatic departure from what you're used to with OpenShift Online. And we have millions of applications deployed out to version two of OpenShift Online, which you can get to just going to openshift.com. And so as you begin to think about migrating your applications over to our new system, watch this video and I'll give you some tips and tricks. So the first thing I want to do is just log in to the developer preview console. So to do that, I'm going to go to preview.openshift.com and throw in console at the beginning here, just in case it doesn't redirect me. The first thing you're going to notice is that we allow you to auth with GitHub. That's pretty crazy cool, right? And you can see it's OpenShift Online Developer Preview. And if you are like most people, you've been waiting for a couple years on this. So you're probably pretty excited now that we have this out to, to where you can start looking at. So I'm going to go ahead and log in with GitHub here. It's going to ask me to auth, put in my GitHub username and my password. And I'm typing in real time here, and I do have a mechanical keyboard. So I apologize if the keys are a little noisy, but that's how you know that I'm actually doing this in real time. So the first thing that you're going to be pleased to see is this is indeed OpenShift Online. And I don't have any projects yet. So the difference between OpenShift Online version 2 and this new platform is that in version 2, which you're all familiar with, we had these concepts of domains or namespaces. And now we group everything with a project. So it's just a nice organizational uh, feature to allow you to group things together. So I don't have one. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new project here. And the first thing it's going to ask me for is the name of my project. So I'm going to name my project on cap. So you're probably wondering what on cap means, and that is on container application platform. My namespace on OpenShift uh, V2, OpenShift Online, was on PaaS, and now we believe that OpenShift has progressed into a, a new beast called a container application platform instead of the traditional platform as a service because you do interact with the platform uh, via containers. It is a platform for managing and orchestrating those. You can give a description if you want to. I'm just going to say a description and click on create. And so now I have a new project created and the first thing it wants to do is ask me to create a new application. But before we do that, I'm going to show you just a few other things real quick. If I click back on OpenShift Online here, I can go back to a project overview page to where I can view all of my projects. We can see the one I just created. I can delete this project from here. I can create another new project. You're not going to have access um, to create a new project other than one in the developer preview based on quota. A um, couple other things I want to show you. If you click on this question mark right here, if you click on about, this is where you can verify the versions that we're running. We're running OpenShift version 3.2 and we're running Kubernetes version 1.2. This is also important because it links to the appropriate command line tool for your operating system. Now a lot of people like to use the command line. That's what I prefer using, but I'm going to show you a mix of both. And so if you do want to use the command line tool or the CLI, just download the correct one here. Now, this is a lot easier than OpenShift Online version 2 because we have switched over to use the Go programming language and we provide a single executable for each operating system. So we no longer have the dependency on 
Ruby and, and SSH and all this other stuff that you had to have installed before. Um, so you can just download this single executable, add it to your path, and you're done. And then how you authenticate is a little bit different in OpenShift 3. Everything's token-based. Remember, um, we authenticated with GitHub. So how do you actually authenticate to the platform? And if you want to authenticate via the command line tool, you can see that it's down here. You can just copy and paste this. You can click to show the token. I'm not actually going to show it right now. Um, but you just copy and paste that into the command line tool. All right, so let's go back to our platform here, our platform overview, and go into my project on container application project. And it's, this is an empty project right now. So let's go ahead and add something to it. Now, just for simplicity's sake, I'm going to add a PHP application. The process is the same um, regardless if you want to use Java, um, Ruby, Python, Perl, whatever the case may be. Okay, so let's go ahead and click on Add to Project. And this is where I can select any existing Docker images or builder images that is in the OpenShift registry, the OpenShift Docker registry that's part of the platform. And so if I come down here to PHP, I see we have a couple of PHP images. We have 5556. We have the latest, we all ha also have some samples. You can also filter by keyword if you just wanna show all the PHP ones. Now, what is interesting to know is you're probably wondering, well, if I use one of these Docker images, how do I actually get my code into the running container? Since the beauty of this platform is that you don't actually have to write Docker build files, and or sorry, write Docker files and run Docker builds and copy your code over as you're building the image, push that image up to a registry, and then, then deploy that container and then worry about orchestration. As part of OpenShift Online 3, we've created a new project called Source to Image. And this is going to simplify your life as a developer so much. You're gonna absolutely love it. So let me show you how that works. I'm gonna use PHP 5.6 here, and it's asking me for a name, and I'm going to just call this Grant PHP. And check this out. Right here, it's asking for a Git repository URL. So OpenShift Online 3, much like the previous version, uh, prefers Git as the source code management system to interact with the platform. And so if you have your existing code in a Git repository, um, it doesn't have to be on GitHub. It can be on GitLab, which uh, is another uh, system that I enjoy using. It can be in any Git repository, right? It doesn't. It's not vendor specific. Um, so to show this, I am mean, going to pop over to my GitHub account real quick because that's what most people are familiar with. And I'm going to go to my um, G Shipley repo. Here's a picture of me if you're wondering what I look like. Here I'm, I'm talking to you. I'm going to click on my repository and I have this simple PHP application that uh, I modified 26 days ago. And I'm going to just get the Git URL for this. I'm going to copy that pop back over to my OpenShift console here, and I'm going to paste that in, okay? And I'm gonna click on Create. And bam, that's all there is to it. So now, under the covers, what OpenShift Online 3 is doing is it's cloning that source code repository, and it is making a new Docker image on the fly that matches what you need for your application to run. So it's taking that PHP 5.6 base image that's actually running on top of Red Hat Enterprise Linux, um, and it's going to build your source code if it needs to be built. It's going to resolve any dependencies. If you have any composer dependencies or Maven dependencies or package JSON dependencies, whatever the case may be, it's going to get this application into a deployable artifact. It's then going to layer that on top of the base Docker image and create a new one on the fly for you and then deploy that out. Okay, so let's go back to our overview and we can see this actually running here. We have a new build running. Grant PHP 1 is running and we can look at the log file directly inside of the console and the web console. And I can scroll down. You can click on follow over here to see what's going on. And down here at the very bottom, it's pushing this new image up to the uh, private registry inside of OpenShift. So it built a new Docker image called Grant PHP, it tagged it as latest and pushing that up. And so the build and everything happened, now we're just waiting for it to push this image up to the uh, internal registry. So you can click on stop following there and scroll back up. And while I'm in here, um, this is a build. So we can look at different areas inside of a build. We can see the status is this running, it was started a minute ago. 
It's been running for one minute, 36 seconds. Now this does take a little bit of time the first time you create this image and we'll see sub subsequent builds are going to be much faster. You can see where it's putting the image inside of the Docker registry and here's the uh, URL for that. The source type is Git. The source repo I pulled from the master branch. You can pull from any branch you want. Um, my output image is called oncap grant php that is my outputted docker image and here's my push secret that we needed to know um, my build actually finished now if we go over to environment if we had any environment variables we could see that logs i showed you events you can kind of get a feel for what's going on um, at 122 in the afternoon i assigned a build and you can go through and follow the process here it created an image, it started the con or started the container, and then it created a container, okay? So let's go back to our overview, and sure enough, now my application is running, and here is the application overview piece of the web console. So I have a service called grantphp that was created, and I'll go into all of this in more detail in just a second. Here is the actual URL for my application. It created a default route um, as it deployed this out um, via that service that was defined. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. That's probably what you want to see. Um, and you can see this is just a little message. I was testing something earlier, so it's going to say this is a change from Orion. I was actually looking at the Orion um, IDE. Pretty cool. Um, but we'll get into that in another video. And we have my builds completed. I can view the log. I can dismiss the build. And right here is my running application, running inside of a Docker container that's actually encapsulated inside of a Kubernetes pod. We can see the image that it's using with the hash, how big that image is. It turned out to be 175 megs. Um, the build that it, that is currently deployed, the source, and the ports that it's listening on. Okay. So the first thing I want to show you is how to scale this bad boy up. To scale up, a uh, application in OpenShift Online 3, all you do is you click, simply click the scale up button and it's going to quickly scale that up to two pods, add it to the service, and then begin load balancing. So now I have two of these running. And if we click on this, sure enough, the app is still responsive. You can scale back down to one if you no longer need that traffic. And so the scaling is very responsive inside of OpenShift Online 3. It's almost instantaneous. It's so quick. It's phenomenal. Now, even if you're using Java with a JBoss Enterprise Application Platform server or a Tomcat server, the scaling is just as quick even in the uh, other programming languages because, again, it's just scaling a container that it's already built and adding another one. So let's start diving in here and see some of the features of OpenShift Online 3 now that we have a simple application deployed and are able to use it. The first thing I want to show you is kind of a manager's dashboard orchestration view tool. I don't know. I'm a, I'm a developer at heart, so I don't really use it that much. Um, but you can see that it shows your entire application inside of a nice little view here so you can see you know what's going where and how things are interconnected and this is the entry point um, and we have the running application you can click on it and things will up, update over here here's my pod if I click on this orange thing this is my service and this is my route so the entry point comes in through the route to the service to the pod uh, back to the replication controller and then a deployment config is hung off of that as well. So let me move the pod up here and let's just go back to the overview and um, scale scale up. Um, oops, click the wrong button. Let me scale this up to two and once we have the second pod running here I'll show you that tool again and you can see that now we have um, two pods that's actually serviced via the route. Okay, so let me drag a few things around here. I'll show you how this is working. Okay, so we have an external request coming in through the route. It's going to hit the service, which is the load balancer. That load balancer is this going to serve the route or the traffic to one of these two pods. This pod is backed by a replication controller and a deployment config, which defines what the application state should look like. Make sense? Okay, cool. So let's uh, go back 
over here we'll scale back down we don't actually need two of these pods running and I want to go into browse and show you a few of the features and uh, different things you can look at under browse you can look at builds we already looked at the build as it was happening but I can come in here on the build look at the logs I can also start a new build if I want I'll just you know click on uh, start build and that's gonna follow that same procedure that it did initially it's gonna check for changes in that upstream git repository it's gonna build a new image and deploy that out you can also edit the YAML for the build directly inside of the browser if you want to get down into the nitty-gritty details of how a build works maybe you want a different strategy whatever the case may be it's beyond the scope of this introductory video but you can edit this YAML file directly inside the browser now do you remember when I told you that the first time takes a little bit longer I just want to you know prove to you because I know you don't believe me um, but I was doing it in real time here. You can see the first build took 1 minute 56 seconds and the second build like I promised was much faster. It took 22 seconds. Okay, and oh we almost, we just missed it, but you could have seen the rolling deployment. So we'll come back and, and do that again in a little bit. So if I click on deployments, I have actually done two deployments. That makes sense, right? Because I did two builds and so I had two specific deployments. And so I can go into this deployment and actually look at some of the details on, on this. And you can modify some of these things. Um, you can look at the timeout parameters. You can set selectors. You can see what image is deployed, um, what uh, the latest source code is that's been deployed. It also gives you some help if you want to manually deploy um, from the command line. Now, um, down here, it, you can see that it's deployed one rec replica of our latest build. It was created a minute ago and it's going to trigger on an image change. So anytime that image changes, it's going to make a new rolling deployment. Also, at this point, you can attach persistent storage to your container. That's freaking awesome, right? So if you click on attach uh, persistent storage, I don't have any persistent volume claims. I would have to add one of those first, but I can actually atta attach persistent storage to my running pod and if that pod goes down and comes back up the storage will still be there why is that important that's important in case you want to I don't know save your data in the database that we're going to attach in a few minutes um, so any stateful application you want to run on the platform um, that's how you, uh, one way that we allow you to do it so you may not be familiar with stateful and stateless and cloud native there's a lot of push going around that you know apps should be cloud native and cloud native platforms to where you don't actually handle state in your application we uh, believe that is it's good to create cloud native based applications if it fits well with your organization but being a large uh, company that's been in the Linux space and running applications for many many years for some of the largest customers and clients in the world and companies in the world we realize that most people don't have the ability to rewrite everything in a stateless cloud native fashion so we took that to heart as we were building this next version of the platform and one of our number one goals or tenants was to allow both stateful and stateless applications and so I'm happy to report that you know if you want to take advantage of docker containers and orchestration with kubernetes and what cloud scale based computing can provide for you openshift give it a try you know we keep the users uh, requests in, in mind as we're developing this new stuff instead of trying to um, force everyone down a brand new paradigm so enough of a tangent on that let's go back to our browse and look at events this is the full event stream or event log from everything that I've been uh, doing today. We can see we just started a container right here. You can filter by time, name, severity, reason, all kinds of cool stuff you can look at there. Um, we're now gonna take a look at pods. These are the pods um, that I've had. Now you'll notice, you may have thought we'd just have one pod, which is that running container that we just deployed, but we actually have three pods. And that's because when we run a build, we actually run that on the platform itself in, in another pod. So you can actually look at these pods. Now they're no longer running. As you can see here, um, the containers ready is zero out of one on this build too. But our actual application is running inside of this pod right here. And so if I click on that, we can see that it is indeed running. Here's the IP address. Here's the node that it's running on, which is pretty handy. 
um, if you ever need that information. Here's the state, um, and here's the template that, that it used, just some more information about it. You can see how much memory it's using. It's using 307 out of 512. The auth token, you can look at environment variables, which I haven't configured any yet. You can look at the pot or the logs on the running container inside of the web browser, which is really cool. One of my favorite things to do is uh, click on this terminal here, and you can actually look at, um, you know, open up a terminal session on your running container inside of the web browser if you needed to, you know, just check something out real quick. Maybe you wanted to look at the environment variables without having to do it locally on your own system. Maybe you're on a different system and you don't have the OC tool installed or whatever the case may be. You can just pop right into the web console and take a look at it there. And then you can look at events just for the running pod. Now we'll take a look at routes. Routes is what exposes my application to the outside world. It's what created that URL that's available. If I click on that, this is my application. Right? And so you can modify this or change it um, if you come in here, you can edit the YAML, you know, change the host, whatever, um, and, and create different routes. All right, let's go back to browse. Services, this is the, you can think of this as the load balancer. It's kind of the entry point into the application. Um, and you can click down and get more details on that as well. Look at events. And then lastly, you can click on storage. And you can see that I don't have any persistent volumes to actually claim right now, but this is how you would attach stuff. Okay, let's go down to settings real quick and discuss a little bit about quota on OpenShift Online 3. Now, everyone knows OpenShift Online, the public uh, version of the OpenShift Cloud that we offer, has been free of charge for people to use. And that's been phenomenal for people, for developers to try things out, a very low barrier to entry. And we are happy to announce that we've included that with OpenShift Online 3. As well, in OpenShift Online 2, you're able to create up to three containers, um, each with 512 megs of RAM. And so let's look at what the developer preview has for limits right now. For CPU and memory, you get up to two gigabytes of memory um, to use. And you can specify when you create a container or application how much you want to actually use and then based on the amount of memory that you allocate to a container is how much CPU you actually get. I hope that makes sense. Um, but you can come in here and you can look at how you're actually using things but the restriction um, or the quota for the developer preview is based on memory which is set at, um, oh this is saying 1.3 and up here it's saying two, so I'll have to dig into that and see which one it actually is. Um, and then you can look at how much memory and CPU you're actually using at any point in time. Okay, so let's go back to our overview here and let's actually scale this down to zero pods. I don't actually want it anymore, um, but that'll leave it running. Let's say I wanted to do some maintenance on the application and, you know, um, I didn't want it to be up while I was doing it. I can just scale it down to zero pods. And when I'm ready to start serving the application again, I can just scale it back up to one pod and it'll start handling those requests again. Okay, so let's take a look at adding a database. So if I click on add to project, and let's say I wanna add MySQL here. Um, here's a MySQL persistent. Maybe we wanna do Mongo. Let's see if we have Mongo in here. We have MongoDB. And we should probably have Postgres as well. Um, yep, sure enough. So let's add this MySQL database here. And here you can specify some information. I could have done this on the PHP one that we deployed as well. So here's my memory limit. I can, I can say, you know, 512 megs. I could, you know, go down to 256 or up to 1.5 gigs, whatever I want to do. Um, give it the... Um, the name, the service name, just leave it MySQL. Um, the MySQL user, it'll generate one if it's empty, but let's just create one to show how this can work. Grant MySQL, and let's give it a password, Grant MySQL, and the database name, I'm just going to call it Grant MySQL, and the volume capacity, this is where you can specify how much disk space you want your application database to actually be able to use. So I'm going to click on create and if we go back over 
we can see that this is going to start spinning this up. Okay. So while that's running, let me show you how to make a code change um, to your application. So if I go into um, my PHP application and if I look at the builds here, we can see, let me look at build number two, that this is coming from my source repo of gshipley.simplephp. So let me pop that open in a browser again and let me copy this um, the URL to clone clone the repo. All right, so I'm going to go to my command line here and let me clear this and I am just going to run a git clone and clone that repo down so now I have it. Okay? And so I'm going to go into simple PHP and I'm going to look at this index file and I'm actually going to say welcome to OpenShift Online Developer Preview. Pretty fancy. We're going to save that. I'm going to commit this. Welcome. Now, there are two ways of doing this, okay? So the first thing I can do is just run a git push and that's going to push it up to my GitHub account, and then I'd want to start a build on OpenShift. So let's do that first. And you can see I may not have Git configured yet for this particular environment. Okay, so our source code has been pushed up to GitHub. So now let me switch back over to our project, and if I click on the route, you can see that it's still the old one um, that I had in here. So how do we actually deploy this new version? Now. The way you do this is you go into your build, just click on that button, click on start build, and that is going to pull down um, the most recent source code from GitHub, and it's going to create a new Docker image on the fly, and it's going to um, deploy that out. So I wanna watch this page right here while it's running. It should happen fairly quickly here. Now we have two things here. This is our database right here, and this is our PHP application. And this is what I wanna show you that rolling deployment. So that it pulled that code down, built a new Docker container. Watch this, it's deploying that Docker container. It's in a ready state. So it scales the other one down and it removes it from the load balancer. Awesome. Like pal, Bob's your uncle. Look how fancy that was. That was pretty cool. And so now if I click on this URL, we can see that my source code has been updated. Welcome to OpenShift Online Developer Preview. So let me show you another way to do this, okay? Um, Let's go into our build and let's look at our configuration here. So on my configuration, we support both generic webhooks and GitHub specific webhooks. So if you're using GitLab or something like that, you can set a webhook. So I'm gonna show the URL for this GitHub webhook and I'm gonna copy that um, to my clipboard. I'm gonna go over to my GitHub project and I'm going to look at the settings here and it's been a while so here it is here settings webhooks I already have one in here I'm gonna delete it okay so I don't have any webhooks so I want to add one so I click on add payload URL paste in what I copied from the OpenShift online 3 uh, dashboard and I'm gonna disable SSL verification <coughs> actually um, you could probably leave that on if we have a valid security certificate which I assume we do um, but maybe not I don't know and then click on add webhook okay so now anytime i make a change to my project we're going to see a build automatically happen so let's let's uh go to the overview page and i'm going to pop this up and i'm going to make this command line just a little bit smaller clear the page may vi uh, my index html file again here and maybe we want to echo maybe a line break and say um, automated builds okay and let's save that we're gonna get commit uh, build we'll just give it that and get push so now we can see look how quick that was that was awesome as soon as it got up to github it called that trigger inside of OpenShift and it triggered this new build so we have a new build for running just by me pushing my code over to OpenShift. Um, now again, this is gonna take about 26, 27 seconds, which is pretty phenomenally fast for what we're actually doing under the covers, but hold on to your horses, ladies and gentlemen, because I'm gonna show you an even faster way in just a second. 
So this build's going to be completed here. It's doing that rolling deployment again. And now it's scaled down to zero, removed it from the load balancer or the service inside of OpenShift. And now if we click on this, we can see that just by pushing my code, this was updated. Awesome. Okay, so how can we make this faster? Now, let's go to the command line. And what I want to do is maybe I want to, um, let's open up a new terminal. No, let's just use this one. So let's do a vi index.php and let's echo even faster and we're going to save that now if i just want to copy that directly into my container i can say oc get pods it's going to give me my pod id which is right here i can do oc rsync and i'm going to say pod and it's been a while since i've done this so let me actually do a help here just to get the uh, source destination okay so let's do OCR sync source is dot and the destination is going to be our pod ID which is grant PHP and it's HC oops if I could type here HC and I can't type four HC I still can't type okay and then we're going to send that to um, we need to get the directory so let me go into our running pod and open up my terminal and do a ls and get a pwd it's opt at root source so let's do slash opt app root slash source all right nope Maybe that didn't work, I don't know. Let's see. Let's go back and check it. And it says even faster. So now you kind of get our flow here. If I can make this cleaner, let me echo a new break here. Boom. And uh, we'll save that and then rsync it over and then refresh our browser and we can see that I've updated that code in real time. Okay, so that was pretty cool. We were able to quickly deploy the application out with rsync. Now, I do have another YouTube video that shows you how to configure your integrated and development environment to use the rsync command. And in that scenario, anytime you press the save button in your IDE or save a file, it's automatically rsynced over. And that's how you get instant gratification with your source code changes on OpenShift Online 3. So you can use it as a true development environment. So just Google instant gratification OpenShift and you'll see the video that I made as well as the blog post. Um, while we're talking about IDEs, I do want to show you guys um, the IDE integration that we have. So I'm just going to pop open Eclipse here <coughs> and I'm going to click on OpenShift application and this is going to open the uh, Eclipse JBoss tools and I'm going to select OpenShift 3 and my server since you're on the developer preview you can do console.preview.openshift.com <clears throat> and we actually probably need to throw a HTTP on the front there and then we're going to do with OAuth and remember we have a tokens now so I can click on retrieve that's going to pop open a little dialog that's asking me to log in with GitHub. And so once I close that, I now have that token right inside of there and it's going to auth over to OpenShift for me. Here's my OpenShift project on container application platform. I can, and this is where I have a decision to make. If I had an existing project inside of Eclipse, I can browse to that project and deploy that over to OpenShift. Otherwise, I can select to do like a JBoss uh, PHP image here or, you know, PHP 5.6. That's what we did before. If I click on Next, it's going to give me a name, my PHP app 2. It's going to ask for my Git repo. And so let me just copy that over real quick. Uh, let me go back to the browser and get the um, repo URL for that. Okay, 
um, and let me go back to clips, paste that in, and uh, basically we can configure a webhook build trigger like we did in the web UI. I don't actually want to do that. Click on next and next and set up our service ports. Our service port is going to listen on 80 and we can define our pod to listen on 8080. That's how the load balancer works. And click on finish. And this is actually going to create a new application for me inside of OpenShift Online 3, all from within Eclipse. We can see that it's already created this stuff for me. So if I go back over um, to my um, Firefox browser, and go back to my OpenShift console and uh, click on overview we can see that we have a new PHP app running this build was actually all started from inside of Eclipse we can look at the log file here and follow it just like we did you know everything before it's pushing that image over and so this is going to be deployed in just a second and if we go back to Eclipse you can see that it actually cloned the repo for me and here it is it opened it in a different editor sorry about that let me click on cancel there all right um so actually let me go in here and just quick you quickly show you this if i go into uh, look at my project properties and click on builders instead of having you go out to that other video i'll just show you how to do it inside of here um, i'm going to click a new one and we want to run a program click ok and our new builder is going to be called rsync and the location is the location of your OC command line tool so let me get that real quick I'm just gonna pop over here and say which OC and this is gonna give me the location of my OC command line tool so just use you know whatever location you installed it in and my working directory um, I want that to be my project so I'm gonna click OK there okay now my arguments we want to pass in just like we did our sync and then it was the current directory and then our pod ID so let's go back to the um, browser again here and we can get the pod ID here right there it is so I'm gonna copy that and we'll go back over to Eclipse yet again paste that in and then a colon and then it was opt app root slash source I believe is what it was click on apply and click OK and let me just make sure that everything's set up everything should be good here environment we need to go to build options and launch in backgrounds and we want this to be ran during auto builds as well click apply click OK click OK alright so now I have uh, oh, operation not permitted. Maybe I'm not authorized. So now, if I edit this index.php file, I'm gonna close Visual Studio Code. Don't know why that popped up. Oh, because I don't have a PDT installed. So I'm just gonna open this with the text editor, and we can say echo boom and we're going to save that and we can see that it synced over my change go back to my overview page here click on this oh unexpected in the file I screwed something up so let me let's go back to Eclipse and, and fix that real quick I forgot my semicolon so save that we can see the R sync happening right there go back to uh, Firefox reload and boom so this is kind of the workflow that you can use let me split screen this um, so you can see this work a little bit faster here and let me open the clips back up and resize it so this will be good so let's echo some breaks here and say automated deploys if I can spell right here and we're just going to save that so I'm just clicking the save button if I can find it here I'll just use the hotkey and if we come over here click refresh oh I hit it before the sync happened we can see automated deploys 
Oh, but that's still bold. We don't actually want bold. So let's turn off bold. And we'll save that. Come over here, refresh. So you can see that I'm getting instant gratification with that. So that's the Eclipse IDE integration. It's super awesome, um, especially if you're an IDE person. Um, in the Java world, you can do everything right from inside of the IDE. You have an OpenShift Explorer down here where I'm showing you. Here's my project on container application platform. You can see everything you have deployed. Um, here's the Grant PHP app. You can actually um, do port forwarding. You can look at the pod log. Um, you got to set your OC command line tools. Let me do that real quick. Oops, wrong one. So let me just browse for it. Or actually, I already have it. So let me just copy this again here. So Eclipse needs to know where your OC command line tool is to run some of the um, integrations. So I'll click OK and then apply. And now if I come in here and look at you know the pod log, it'll pop open the pod log inside of the Eclipse IDE. So you can do cool things like port forwarding, you can look at the properties, you can do all kinds of stuff inside of the uh, integration. All right, so let's see. <coughs> showed you a bunch of stuff today um, and I don't want this video to get too long but let's just go back over here real quick and I want to show you one other thing so we have this MySQL um, database running right so if we look at this MySQL database and we look at this pod we can see that my environment here's the environment variables that we have now, what we need to do, MySQL user, password, and database, if I want to hook this up, is go over to our um, PHP pod, and let's just, you know, look at the env environment here and grep for MySQL. You can see that by default, when I added the MySQL database to my project, it added some environment variables um, to my uh, running deployment config, okay? And so what's left for me to do as a user is to just come on to the command line tool here and do OC get DC and it's called grant PHP. This is my deployment config. This is what defines the truth of my running application. And I can do OC env and set an environment variable on my PH <coughs> excuse me, PHP app. And I want to do MySQL underscore user equals uh, grant mysql hit enter there so now that deployment config was updated if we go back to the overview you'll see it's actually deploying a new version of my application out and that's because the truth of that application changed it needed that environment variable in order for it to be in a good state and because it wasn't there it went ahead and redeployed it and added that environment variable I hope that makes sense but you would simply just add those environment variables um, to your application and then you would connect to it via your code just like you normally would all right so let's go back to our project if you get tired of a project at any point in time you just click this delete button and it deletes everything in your project and then once you come back and refresh the page you'll have to start over and create a new project again um, so uh, that's I believe all I wanted to show you today that should be enough to get you started with OpenShift Online 3 and the developer preview state if you have any questions just let me know I'm at G Shipley on Twitter alright thanks guys